Shortly after its takeover of Aragon, the Republican army launched another offensive in an attempt to take pressure off the north. The first major battle was at the small town of Belchite. As so often happened, many Republican soldiers gave their lives to capture a town which was strategically unimportant. It was a battle that American volunteer Bill Bailey will never forget. What happened was that the fascists were so deeply entrenched that they made every single foot here at a costly expense to us. They were dead, our dead was every place. Every street had men laying dead on it. Getting inside a house, getting them out of a house, the only way we could do it was punch a hole through the wall, throw a few hand grenades in there, blow that place up, punch the hole again, making, making it bigger, then go into the house, and by God, we did this hour after hour after hour until finally we was able to take one entire street. And uh, it was just, uh, you figure that on both sides, the, the, our men were doing it on that side, we're doing it on this side, we're taking the floor, we're getting into the basement, and we're, they're resisting every single place. So finally, after, say, four or five hours, we were able to take one whole street and that was at a very expensive cost. Belchite finally fell. But only months later, the nationalists recaptured it, at very little cost. The Aragon offensive failed. The Republican army was weak on military tactics and had been torn by internal disunity. By the end of 1937, the Republic his territory shrinking under Franco's onslaught, mounted another offensive. This time, the objective was the provincial capital of Teruel. In the bitter cold of the Aragonese winter, Teruel was conquered. Again, the Republic had won a bloody victory for an objective of little significance. These victory celebrations in Barcelona were premature. the brave words of Catalan president, Luis Campanch, could no longer boost Republican morale. In January 1938, Franco's troops counterattacked and reconquered Teruel. Again, an initial Republican success had ended in disaster. The nationalist forces now prepare to push down from Aragon to the Mediterranean. As the Republican troops retreated, thousands of refugees streamed into Catalonia. the revolutionary battle cries now fell on deaf ears. Only young militants like Teresa Pamias kept their faith in a republican victory. Nosaltres teníem una actitud tan entusiasta i tan romàntica que no veiem 
We had such an enthusiastic and romantic attitude that we didn't even notice how ridiculous we looked when we climbed up lampposts to harangue all those poor women and many children queuing up to buy a bit of bread. We would shout from the lampposts that the fascists would not pass, that we would win the war and all lead better and happier lives. This may sound like demagoguery now, but at that time we really felt it. By February 1938, the nationalist troops were marching towards the sea. The offensive threatened Catalonia, the revolutionary heartland. But there, as in the rest of Republican Spain, the revolutionary spirit of 1936 was now only a memory. On April 14, 1938, nationalist troops reached the Mediterranean and the Republic was cut in two. As Franco's troops celebrated, the Republic summoned up its remaining energies for a battle to prevent its final collapse. <laughs> 